Let me start with a trigger warning. Good, did we get that one out of the way already? Excellent. Hello, people on YouTube. This is Catfine Jedi, and I am going to make a very confusing video. Confusing, I'm so confused, I don't know. So let's say this from the perspective of a Cuban. Of a Cuban American. Of a Cuban Colombian American. Of a Cuban Colombian Italian American? Of a Cuban Colombian Italian American who lived in Japan and is now living in England and is married to a German. <sighs> okay. I find cultural appropriation to be a layered, cosmic, twisty mess. I have never been able to get through it. So let me explain to you a little bit about my perspective on it. And this is me, coming from me, from all those list of things that I just mentioned. All right, so like I get the basic ones. Blackface, probably a bad idea. All those times that uh, black and white movies made all the freaking Indians the bad guys and Westerns, probably a bit offensive. But the thing that's starting to bother me is this idea that culture has become sacred or synonymous with sacred. Like that is the new religion of sorts. And I don't understand that because Culture is unique to an individual. For example, my ass has like 800 cultures in it. Exactly who determines what is acceptable? So the reason in particular this is problematic for like a Hispanic person like myself is the way Hispanic people are even a culture. See, I got into somewhat of a Facebook debate as you must never do. I think it was about Cinco de Mayo when some people were like, you know, you can't use a poncho because that's our culture. And I'm like, is a poncho specific to Mexican culture because I think that many South American and Central American countries use ponchos. So why then is it your culture? And then there's this idea of basic ownership of your culture and all culture and this culture is yours and how dare you and anyone else even remotely not in your culture try and, you know, take or steal as we like to say. But even coming from that, coming from like, well, I'll just start by saying I'm not Mexican, so I can only break it down from like another Hispanic person's perspective. Hispanics are very mixed group of people. This comes from the Colombian Exchange, oh funny name, in which diseases, people, and food actually, a lot of stuff, and lots of things just started going in a big circle or triangle, I don't even know what it is, from Africa and Europe and the Americas. And that's how a lot of these came to be. What I mean by this is that I can't figure out exactly what I am. We have tried in both sides of my family to, you know, break it down and what we've come up with is, and like I said, this is me, so I'm gonna bring it all in from everywhere, is that there are probably Spanish, most definitely, Italian because of the surname, uh, natives of Colombia, I'm not sure which part. I definitely know that uh, in Cuba, the Taino people are the uh, original group that was there. We found an old photo and I'm like 90% sure that my great-great-great-grandfather was black on my mom's side. And yeah, that's as far as I got. Oh yeah, and there's definitely some Jewish people. From this whole giant mess of a human being, what am I not allowed to appropriate? Or what am I allowed to appropriate? Because the way I see it is the way people seem to look at cultural appropriation is that white people, particularly Caucasian people, taking a non-Caucasian person's cultural identity and having fun with it, because that's all they're doing really. Like every aspect of cultural appropriation that I've been looking at recently is, oh look, they're having fun. Look at the drunks in Cinco de Mayo having a good time. Look at your Halloween costume looking like a fucking drunk idiot. It's a just a series of white people getting drunk. And here's the confusing part. What if you're not really white and you do this? For example, once upon a time, me, Hispanicish, whitish Stephanie. Whitish? I don't know, I don't know, it's so confusing. Do you see this? I lived in Japan. And so for the summer festivals that happen around Obon, is uh, it's traditional for women and men sometimes to wear yukata, the summer kimono. In my school, run by completely Japanese people in a Japanese town, in a Japanese festival in Japan, I wore yukata. Is that cultural appropriation? Now, my belief is I don't even know what the hell cultural appropriation really is because no one seems to agree on anything. Everyone has their own little magic lists and apparently like, you know, it's perfectly cool if someone's breaking one of your lists to just bitch them out to kingdom come and everyone can just bravo to your cultural sensitivity and that's really obnoxious, trust me. And you know what the worst part is? The worst part of it all is when you are said minority of sorts and you have people being professionally offended for you, but you don't fucking want that. Oh yeah, and to answer my question, no, it, 
wasn't cultural appropriation. I find actually what tends to happen is it's when such a thing, let's say try on kimonos or whatnot, it's a thing in the States, then it's, oh my God, how dare you? And why are you doing that? And that's our culture. You know, I remember this particular protest, which did take place for people trying on kimonos in front of a museum. And the irony to that was that a lot of the protesters were Chinese. So is it really your culture? Hell, okay. Another one that gets a big thing is geisha, or like the idea of dressing up like a geisha. So again, living in Japan, go to Japan, you go to Kyoto, a big touristy city, and they, well, they'll market the crap out of their culture to you. And there we have a bunch of people in Japan offering you a geisha photo shoot. They'll dress you up like a geisha, and you can take geisha photos like a geisha. Yet, here in, well, the West, when somebody dresses like a geisha, that's wrong and horrible and bad, but in the country it's from, it's encouraged and good. So this is also what's starting to mess with my brain. Is it only like minorities or ethnic backgrounds that can be appropriated? What about like getting trashed and wearing fucking Levenhosen on Oktoberfest or getting trashed and wearing all green and a little shamrock on St. Patrick's Day? I mean, it sounds like a lot of these are about getting trashed. Those are cool, but getting trashed and putting on a poncho and a sombrero on Cinco de Mayo, that's that's the bad one, because stereotypes? I, I definitely know that the poncho isn't exactly like a sacred uniform, or and the sombrero is by far just a very practical thing to wear in the sun. You know, woven hats in general are. And what about other cultures who, let's say, take Western ideas and then appropriate them? I'm gonna go back again. Back in time, I lived in Japan. Christmas in Japan is not Christmas. It's not a, let's celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. At least not for most people, because most people in Japan are not Christian. Instead, it is, let's watch all the Christmas lights, and let's eat Christmas cake and KFC, and let's look at Santa, who's like some random white guy that they hired for this one event, and presents, and love, and boyfriends, and girlfriend, and like a pre-Valentine's Day kind of thing. It, has Japan appropriated Western culture? And should be, we be wagging our freaking fingers at them and telling them, no, you're wrong, how dare you do that to us? And I guess the thing that bothers me is that, like, who is this mysterious council of people from different cultures and races who decides what's acceptable and what's not? For all people who accuse others of cultural appropriation, there is some basic generalization and probably hints of racism towards anyone. Let's imagine, so you see these people and they're wagging their finger at, you know, some white guy with dreads. And their assumptions are immediately, Obviously they're white, so they can't be Jamaican, or from the Caribbean, or anywhere else where dreads are prevalent, which is bullshit because, if, you know, I'm from Miami, so I at least have met more than a few in my life. But you've already assumed that they can't possibly understand. Instead, they're stealing your culture, which is what? African-American, maybe? That's my guess. that's my generalization. Or wherever it is you're from. You know, do you really know that? And what's become even crazier is that we live in this, like, hyper-globalized world where we're constantly exposed to people of all different cultures, of all different races, all the time. You know, if anything, it's like now we're trying to open up more than ever, but instead we're just trying to, like, box ourselves in and say, no, you there, you can't have that, that's not your culture. When my internet argument that I had with random ex-person, who I think was of Mexican descent, I brought up the fact that, all right then, well, as a Cuban of sorts, you can't have salsa music and mojitos and cigars and guayabera shirts. And then they proceeded to tell me that those things were not like really sacred or important enough to be considered like part of my culture that can't be stolen. Which is bullshit, cause Fuck you, you don't know that. Like, who gets to make these stupid rules? I want a mojito right now, actually. And then we get to fight with Puerto Rico and who really has the mojito. Cuba, buddies, Cuba. Speaking of Puerto Rico, a fun fact about Puerto Rican people is that they actually have the closest to the original Taino people genetically in the Caribbean. Now, this is not me saying that racism does not exist and isn't a part of our own upbringing, and there isn't so many aspects and so many twisted ideas that come into what makes our mindset, what we find interesting and beautiful. But I find that if we just continue to lock ourselves off and basically continue to villainize people for what essentially is having fun, you're going to just isolate yourselves, and that's probably the worst thing you can do in this day and age. And it bothers me because my culture, my unique culture as a human being is everything. Is this life I've lived, which is every country I've gone to, all the friends I've made, all the traditions I've picked up myself from people teaching me, from people wanting me to participate. 
from growing up with them, from getting them later in life, uh, whether it's Basti's crazy ass football, which is, you know, a German thing apparently, or, you know, my Cuban upbringing of intense loudness when we just talk normally to each other, or my Colombian love of cocaine. That's the joke, obviously. And hell, do we really want to punish everyone for enjoying somebody else's culture? Think of all the things that we wouldn't have right now. Think of all the people and the ideas and the traditions that have all come out of sharing and opening and, well, sometimes even freaking taking, unfortunately. But look, that's the way the world is done and we have to kind of, I don't say close the book on history. What I mean is we should learn from it, but we shouldn't continue to punish each other for trying to open ourselves up to new things, to new possibilities, to new ideas. And we certainly shouldn't just cross our arms and yell racist every time somebody does something that you personally don't agree with. Like it's the how big can I be offended contest, the winner takes all because that means you're the most sensitive, best human being you could be. And let me just start by saying, look, I grew up in the United States. I come from a Hispanic family. My family wasn't particularly oppressed but like I said, racism is deep and we can have a whole big conversation with that. But all I can say is that I personally grew up in a very privileged, nice life. So maybe I'm not understanding the whole situation. And I am open to that. And I'm not just here to be a total like, fuck you to everybody who like, you know, disagrees with me. Because, you know, everything is great and racism doesn't exist anymore. But at the same time, do we continue to just freaking sanction everyone who we don't agree with and just freaking throw our arms in the air and make a fucking uber fit because somebody driving has a little Hawaiian lady bobblehead because cultural appropriation is evil and bad and horrible and who the fuck are you anyway? Are you Hawaiian? Ooh. That's it. That's all for now.